What is going on all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the Power Pack Classic Omnibus Volume 2 from Marvel Comics. So let's get started. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us a copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on June 16th and then a few weeks later in the book market. And speaking of direct market, that's the cover we're looking at here by June Brigman. To your left, that's your standard edition cover drawn by John Bogdanove. Both of them are artists inside of the book and you'll see their artwork in there. What I want to do is just show what this looks like. Here's your spine with the powers and their new costumes there. And then the back of the book showcasing all the covers that are collected in this particular omnibus. Uh, retail price is $125. And I did want to show the book next to volume one. This is the standard edition cover. Here's the spines. You have volume one, volume two. No creators on this particular spine, however. And then the back of both of the books. Both of them, again, retailing for $125. And I probably know why they left out the creators. Probably because there's a huge lot of them inside of the book. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that once I get the book open. But let's look at them under the dust jacket. So you have different art here. I think this is from the 2000 series. And then in the back, I've always loved that master. I know this is volume one, but I've always loved that master mold cover. All right, let's get this book open and talk about it. So the powers are back. Jack, Alex, Julie, and Katie. Oh, that is nice. I like that. They're all back along with their parents. And here's all the creators. You have the writers, the pencilers, inkers, the colorists, and you probably are familiar with a lot of these names that have blown up since the days of Power Pack. Let's see, here's your table of contents. Telling you where to find each issue and what page it's on. And they put a border around the covers. All these little stars are around each of the covers. It kicks off with issue 37. So, speaking of issues, this does collect Power Pack issue 37. The series that started in 1984 and until the final issue, which uh, got canceled in issue 62, and that happened in 1991. So 37 through 62, Excalibur 29, the holiday special number one, uh, Power Pack, the four issue miniseries from 2000, uh, Fantastic Four 574, and FF number 15, the Future Foundation. All of that is during the Hickman years of Fantastic Four. Power Pack, this is pretty interesting, the 2017 one-shot, it's issue 63, so it takes place after issue 62, of course, but it wasn't written until years later, after the series was canceled in 1991, took all the way to 2017, I think it was the Legacy issue is what it's called, uh, Grown Up, the one-shot from 2019, and then material from Marvel Super Heroes number 6, which has a pretty interesting story, as well as the Marvel Fanfare number 55. So... As I mentioned, the powers are back. All four of the kids are back, and they're going through some changes. Um, uh, in the first volume, they changed out some of their powers. They changed out some of their code names. So, I mean, why wouldn't you? You're a kid. If your power is going to change, you might as well change your costume and your code name. So, it's not the only changes, because um, during this era of Power Pack, it seems like the editors decided to try something new. And that is to have a rotating just team of creators write and draw this. So you have some stories here written by Louis Simonson, who's one of the co-creators of the book. Um, you have some stories in here by John Bogdanove. You have an, a story in here by Dwayne McDuffie. You also have stories in here from Juliana Jones and Howard Mackey and then Michael Higgins ending that series. And they rotate back and forth. Actually, Michael Higgins writes the last few issues. Um, and if you may be familiar with that name, uh, he wrote some of the, uh, just a few issues of Excalibur. As a matter of fact, one of the issues that is in here is of Excalibur. Uh, he's trying to wrap up some of his storylines that were dangling from his series. But the artwork here is freaking awesome. Well, at least to me, this brings back a lot of memories. Uh, here's a team up with the New Mutants. 
So while it may seem like a bunch of kiddish stuff, here, let me do this. There's some Steve Buscellato artwork in here. Glennis Oliver doing a lot of the, um, the colors. And what I was saying is while it may seem like a kid's book, there are a lot of adult themes going on through this particular era of Power Pack. These kids are dealing with uh, things that you would see in the news during the time. And I've always appreciated that. There's John Bognanove coming back. Now he's writing some of the stories. You might remember that guy if you were into the Inferno saga. Uh, the Boogeyman does come back as well as the Snarks. Now there are changes here in the Inferno saga. And you can find out for yourself. Now, there was another fifth member of the team, and that is Franklin Richards, who went by the name of Tattletale. So, he did join the team, and then he left the team for a while. That right there, June Brigman, doing her artwork with John Bogdanove writing it. Uh, but he would come back and forth between the Fantastic Four and the team of Power Pack. So... Again, just showcasing some of the artwork. Wills Portacio does some of the stuff in here. Just had to find the issue. Look at that. Wills Portacio, the guy that went on to co-create Bishop. Doing his artwork here. And actually, he drew the Punisher. So, it makes sense that the Punisher shows up here. But this is what his artwork looked like in the early days. Yeah, I always thought it was funny when the kids would change code names. It was easy... When I was a kid and keeping up with what Julia was going to call herself because her powers changed. Oh, this is a cute. Um, yeah, this issue is awesome. I used to have this as a kid. Yes, the Elsewhere issue is awesome. This is the one that's drawn by Hilary Barta. So what was I saying? Yes, uh, the characters would change their code codename. Uh, like some of them would be G, Destroyer, Mass Master, uh, Lightspeed would become Molecula, and then Starstreak. And then Jack became Mass Master, and then he went back to Counterweight and Destroyer. So depending on their powers, and it wasn't the last time that it happened in the first Omnibus, it also happened here. Now the series, hey, there's Kofi. Now the series, like I said, sadly got canceled with issues number 62, and it gets a little strange. Uh, mainly what's happening to the character of Alex Power uh, during this particular last era of Power Pack. And like I mentioned, Michael Higgins doesn't really get to finish his story arc. It moves on to the pages of Excalibur. So you have to figure out what happens to their parents and what happens to Alex in the picture in the issues of Excalibur. Here's the final issue right there, going home. Yeah, and the Red Ghost does show up when the, uh, the powers are needing the help of Reed Richards. Now let's fast forward a little bit because, okay, here's Michael Higgins' issue of Excalibur and the story takes place after power pack number 60 here's the uh, marvel superhero summer special also written by michael higgins and here's the holiday special so both louise simonson and june brigman the creators of the power pack came back to just resolve some story arcs and actually retcon some of the stuff that michael higgins did towards the end of his run i remember i was actually happy with because you know when you don't like the change of a comic book, you hope, like, the original creators come back and fix all the mistakes. And that's what they did. They didn't retcon everything, but they did retcon a couple of things and change uh, things back to the way that they were. And also wrapping up some loose plot ends. Now, let's keep going here. This is the Calvin and Hobbes type of story. It's the extra in the back. But I wanted to go here to Marvel Fanfare. Look at that Jim Lee picture of Wolverine. Colleen Doran. So actually, I just did a overview of the Neil Gaiman Library editions, and you saw how beautiful Colleen Doran's artwork had gotten. Not to say that this stuff isn't beautiful. Uh, okay, so this is a really interesting story, because it starts off with sort of an apology from the editor, talking about how this story was originally written years ago. So if you see down here, this story takes place between uh, the events of Power Pack 52 and New Mutants number 73. So it is written by Terry Austin, and Col Colleen Doran is the artist of this particular story. So for some reason, they never um, <laughs> published it until Marvel Fanfare. And I feel like that's what happened a lot of times with Marvel Fanfare. It's like, oh, wait, there, here's a script that's been written, or here's a story that was written for years ago. Let's go ahead and print it in Marvel Fanfare. That happened quite often. And Colleen Doran wasn't done with the Power Family. 
because she returned with SC uh, Burry, I think was his name. Yeah, SC Burry was the writer of this four issue miniseries from the 2000s. And this is what the artwork looks like. So it does return the characters and to their last costumes there. Now, when we get to the Fantastic Four, one of the things I did notice in this particular issue right here with Franklin Richards' birthday, there is a word that's been censored uh, from Valeria there. and But it, it wasn't censored in the Omnibus edition of the Fantastic Four Volume 2 uh, by Jonathan Hickman. It's still there. But I did want to say, probably because this is rated uh, T for teen, that it was censored twice. So here is the FF and Future or Fantastic Four and Future Foundation by Jonathan Hickman. A couple of issues where the powers appear, um, like Alex ends up joining the Future Foundation. Um, I think Jack comes in for a little while, and so does Julie. I do miss Katie though. I miss her relationship with Wolverine. Here's the Legacy issue by Devin Grayson and Marika Cresta doing the artwork you know the characters did grow a little bit some of them ended up joining the new warriors and some of them i think appeared in runaways and you can see some in avengers academy and of course the ff book mainly the future foundation with the rest of the kids now there was another there it is power pack by louise simonson and june brigman together with goody hiru to bring back the power pack grown up this is crazy look they're wearing lila cheney t-shirts that's awesome when the creators come back chris claremont came back to x-men to do uh, one of those one shots larry hama came back and wrote wolverine you got a lot of creators like roger stern writing um what was it the avengers so i love this one shot and here is the goody hiru part of the story That's a I love Goody Hero's artwork. Civil Wars. That's during the Civil War era. And as far as extras in the back, you do have some of the Power Pack uh, handbook. Yeah, there it is. The handbook of the Marvel Universe. Numinous. And some of the covers, original covers and internal artwork here without the colors variants here to issue of ff number 15 done by june brigman and power pack number 63 variant which is the cover to this direct market cover and then the back here grown up variant cover now let's talk about the binding of the book the book has 1052 pages and it does have sewn binding and here's that eye not that big of an eye but it was laying over really nice. I can't believe we have all of Power Pack in Omnibus Edition. That's that's the time of Marvel Omnis that we're living in these days. We have all of Power Pack. And we're going to get all the Cloak and Dagger, the classic stuff. So hopefully we'll get some more stuff like Darkhawk would be awesome. Sleepwalker, things like that from the 90s. And of course, yes, the classic stuff like Iron Man and more uh, X-Men and more moon knight and more well maybe i'll just keep those surprises these collections are awesome i i think really the only thing that's missing from these collections is just the letter pages what were they called the power pick i think where they would put fan art up and like the letters would make fun of the characters that are in the book I think i'm really about the only thing that's missing from these collections but that's it if you have any more questions, leave the comments down below. That, as they say, is that. And if you're interested in purchasing this particular omnibus, check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you mentees that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Me Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. 
And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this particular omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking it up, if you have the first one, if you are going into the series completely blind, or if it does bring you some sense of nostalgia. If you have any more questions, please leave all your questions down below. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love. <music>